Vice presidential candidate Tim Walls making a pitch to union workers in his first solo campaign stop since Kamala Harris tapped him as her running mate. Walls's message, he tried to make it clear, he thinks working class voters, which Democrats frankly have lost a lot of ground with to Republicans, have much more in common with the Democratic ticket than they do with Donald Trump and J.D. Vance. The only thing those two guys knows about working people is how to work to take advantage of them. That's what they know about it. Every single chance they've gotten, they've waged war on workers. Walls touted the fact that he is the first union member to be on a presidential ticket since Ronald Reagan and shared this about his running mate. You knew Vice President Harris grew up in a middle class family, picked up shifts at that McDonald's as a student. Can you simply picture Donald Trump working at a McDonald's trying to make a McFlurry or something? It's, oh, he knows, he knows us, he knows us. He couldn't run that damn flurry, McFlurry machine if it tossed him anything, so. On the other side, Trump also zeroing in on the economy. That's what he's expected to focus on when he uh, delivers a speech to voters in North Carolina later on today. His campaign saying in a statement, quote, hardworking Americans are suffering because of the Harris Biden administration's dangerously liberal policies. Joining me now, congressional reporter for The Hill, Michael Schnell, and Washington correspondent for New York One, Kevin Fry. Welcome to both of you. Thank you for being here. I have to say, Look, Democrats have really struggled to figure out how to criticize Donald Trump on this working class. I mean, it is very clear Trump's populist policies have pulled a lot of working class voters, especially white working class voters, but increasingly also voters of color into the Republican camp. Uh, that way of putting it was a little bit sharper than I've seen some Democrats uh, do in the past, because, yeah, imagining Donald Trump making a McFlurry is an image that, you know, it's 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 pointed. Um, Michael, how do you view him? I mean, he does seem like a decent messenger on this topic. Yeah. I think that that's also one of the reasons why Harris ultimately went with Tim Walls as her running mate. And he was one of the dark horse candidates until up until the end when he sort of emerged as one of these top contenders for the job is because something that uh, folks like about him is he's able to talk not in politic talk, not in jargon. He talks straight to the voters. Democrats have referred to him as America's coach, America's uncle, things like that. He has this ability to talk straight to the voters in a way that they can understand, especially working class voters. He mentioned his experience being a member of a union. I think that that could be very effective for Democrats and help them potentially pick up ground in this area. But when, you know, we have this, this look back on the Veep Stakes era and why Harris ultimately went with Walls, we're seeing some more of indications of, of his strengths of things that he brings to the ticket. Well, and Kevin, um, we can also put up how uh, the electorate seems to be moving yeah. um, since Harris took over the ticket. Among non-college white voters, this is specifically in the Rust Belt, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, back in May, Trump was up 25 points with these voters. Now, he still has a significant advantage. 14 points in a closely divided country is no small thing, no. but it is notably considerably less than it was with Biden. Yeah, and I mean, look, this is in some essence both the Harris team trying to rebuild the Biden coalition from a few years ago. And there was some concern, it seems, with Biden about the idea of dropping out that he uh, that Harris would not be able to necessarily recoup that message that he fostered in Scranton as being Scranton Joe, the man of the people, the man of the, of the union workers. It seems she's able to make some inroads with those white voters that maybe was not fully expected. Yeah. Uh, so stick with me for a second. We've obviously this is we've looked at some of the positives Walls brings to the ticket here. Uh, we're also, of course, uh, learning more about each Tim Walls and J.D. Vance as, as well, their records as they both both have kind of stepped into the national spotlight for the first time. And Walls this morning is facing criticism for praising a Muslim cleric who shared anti-Semitic propaganda. Walls has called him a master teacher. Here was Walls in 2018 when he was first running for governor in Minnesota. I would like to uh, first of all say thank you to Imam. Uh, I am a teacher, so when I see a master teacher, I know it. and. Um, over the time we've spent together, one of the things, uh, one of the things I've had the privilege of, is seeing the things in life through the eye of a master teacher, to try and get the understanding. Listening today to the stories and what it means. Walls's appearance alongside the cleric Iman Assad Zaman came after Zaman shared a link to a neo-Nazi propaganda film in 2015. 
And since the October 7th Hamas attacks on Israel, after his appearance with Walls, Zaman has amplified anti-Israel posts on social media. The Harris campaign, in a statement to CNN, says this, quote, the governor and Zaman do not have a personal relationship. Governor Walls strongly condemns Hamas terrorism. CNN also reached out to Zaman about the posts that he shared, and he responded, quote, People, myself included, will sometimes pass along social media items without fully looking at them. I support organizations, leaders, and efforts to bring greater justice, equality, and well-being to all people, whether Muslim or Jewish, Christian or Hindu, believer or atheist. Desiring harm to peoples is against my faith and my personal convictions. Uh, Michael, this is a very uh, uh, tricky uh, situation here. Um, obviously, uh, some of the things uh, that were noted in how th this imam has conducted himself publicly um, really reach into difficult places. Um, and then politically, this is also a tough place for the Democratic ticket to be. Right. And we saw the Harris campaign respond in that manner. I'm curious to see if both Walls and Harris will receive more pressure on this matter because, of course, the Israel-Hamas war and the situation in the Middle East has been a really hot button issue for Democrats. It's one that has strongly uh, divided them, staunchly pro-Israel Democrats, up against pro-Palestinian liberals who are concerned about the mounting humanitarian deaths in the Gaza Strip. This has really become a large matter for the Democratic Party, one that they've had issues working through during this election. Of course, anti-Semitism should not be tolerated under any circumstances. I'm curious to see, though, if Walls is going to receive more pressure on this, if he's going to be pushed into a place where he has to disavow this. But, of course, important to mention that this happened back in 2018 before he was, you know, in this position where he is right now on the ticket and before the October 7th attack, which really changed a lot in terms of Middle East relations and, and Israel and Palestine. Well, and Kevin, we've also seen, obviously, Harris grappling with how to uh, handle voters who are really unhappy with President Biden's positions right. on the uh, Israel-Hamas war, this uncommitted vote in Michigan. It's a particular uh, issue. She did go backstage after one of her rallies, meet with these uncommitted right. folks, took a picture uh, with them. There does seem to be some more willingness from them to support this ticket. But on the other hand, swing voters are also pretty clear about where they stand in terms of support for Israel. Right. I mean, it's, it's to use the oldest cliche in the book, it's a balancing act for the Harris campaign because on one regard, you have the Republicans like Mike Lawler in New York, for example, and others that have really latched on to this anti-Semitism message to go after uh, the, the Democratic ticket and try to essentially hold on to these swing counties and swing districts that are going to be make or break for control of the U.S. House. At the same time, you have seen Harris at least verbally make entrees to uh, those progressives. The question is, will there be sufficient action that will actually uh, make it palatable for them. All right, Michael Schnell, Kevin Fry, thank you guys both very much for being here this morning. I really appreciate it.